Hi everyone, thank you for watching. If you're watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe below. All of the ad revenue that we'll generate from these videos will be donated to local New Zealand charities. But we need to hit a thousand subscribers to monetize the channel. So hit subscribe, hit the like button, share the video, all of that stuff, and we'll pass the revenue on to the charities. Today I'm talking about what's happening with debt to income ratios, often referred to DTIs, which is confusing, right? Loan to value ratios are referred to as LVRs, then why aren't debt to income ratios referred to as DIRs? Who's in charge of these decisions? Anyway, on the 16th of June 2021, the government announced that the Reserve Bank has been given the authority to use debt to income lending restrictions as another tool in the toolbox to help settle the property market. The Reserve Bank has said that they have no immediate plans to use debt to income ratios. They will only do so after a public consultation process and any change would be designed to impact investors rather than first home buyers. So it's a wait and see situation for now. Some of you may be wondering how debt to income ratios can be measured. They can be measured in two ways, an easy way and a hard way, or rather, an easy to follow way and a, say that again way, so the easy way. This is when the DTI ratio is found by multiplying your household income by a number to determine the maximum amount you can borrow. So if the Reserve Bank mandated a maximum DTI of seven, you would then be able to borrow up to seven times your household income. A household income of $100,000 would therefore be able to borrow a maximum of $700,000. Now let's just pause there because I can hear you starting to type angry comments below. The DTI could be six times, seven times or eight times. The Reserve Bank have indicated it may sit around seven times but we literally can't even guess at the moment. The example given was just to show maths, not a forecast of what debt to incomes will be. The other way of calculating debt to income ratios is using the cost of paying your mortgage against your income. So if the Reserve Bank mandated a maximum percentage of, for example, 25%, then a household earning $100,000 wouldn't be able to get a mortgage that would cost them more than $25,000 per year. At the end of the day, while there is no DTI implementation from the Reserve Bank in the near future, it's now a possibility. And if it implemented, we'll be focused on investors. In other words, first home buyers may be exempt from this rule. The upside is that Tools like debt to income ratios give the Reserve Bank more options before they resort to hiking up the interest rates. Low interest rates being a benefit to all property owners, investors included. If you've got questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. I'm Rupert Goff from The Mortgage Lab. Talk to you soon.